So Dolphins quarterback Tua Tagovailoa had some very interesting things to say about his former head coach, Brian Flores. Comments that uh, do not cast him in the best light. So I've got to talk about that as well as the wild Randy Gregory situation, the even more wild situation of a former NFL player urinating on a passenger mid-flight, preseason standouts, and more right after... All right, first up, Dolphins quarterback Tua Tagovailoa made some waves this morning, to say the least, when he appeared on the Dan Lebitard show and had some interesting things to say about his former head coach, Brian Flores. If you woke up every morning and I told you, you suck at what you did, you don't belong doing what you do, you shouldn't be here, this guy should be here, that you haven't earned this right, and then you have somebody else come in and tell you, you are the best fit for this, you are accurate, you are the best whatever, you are this, you are that. How would it make you feel listening to one or the other? I don't care who you are. You, you can be the president of the United States. You have a terrible person that's telling you things that you, sh you don't want to hear or that, that you probably shouldn't be hearing you're going to start to believe that about yourself. And so that's sort of like what, what ended up happening. Well, that was something. So Tua basically called Flores a terrible person and claims that he told him every day that he sucks and went on to praise his current coach, Mike McDaniel, who took over for Brian Flores after he was fired following the 2021 season. <laughs> Let's talk about this for a second because I don't think Tua was lying, but surely Flores wasn't literally telling him how bad he sucked at his job every single day, right? For some context, Tua was drafted fifth overall in 2020 and took over the starting job in week eight that season, going six and three and leading the Dolphins to a 10 and six record, but just missed the playoffs. Then in 2021, Tua battled through some injuries and only played in 12 games, going seven and five during that span. And the Dolphins once again missed the playoffs after going nine and eight. Now, even back then, there were some rumblings of Flores and Tua not quite seeing eye to eye, and it's not because Tua is five foot five. As it was reported that Flores spent most of the off season in 2021 trying to replace Tua with Deshaun Watson, who was on the trade block. But the Dolphins owner, thank God Stephen Ross, wasn't comfortable making the trade and what a smart man he was. But hey, it now makes sense that Tua started to flourish after the coaching change as Brian Flores and Mike McDaniel are pretty much polar opposites. And I'm not talking skin color here. Flores is an old school defensive minded coach that comes from the Belichick coaching tree and Belichick famously would rip Tom Brady in front of the team during film sessions. He did not give a you know what. Meanwhile, McDaniel is a new school offensive minded coach stemming from the Shanahan coaching tree. So during Tua's two seasons with Flores, he started in 21 games and averaged 212 yards and 1.2 touchdowns per game. Meanwhile, under McDaniel, Tua has started in 30 games and has averaged 272 yards and 1.8 touchdowns per game, leading the Dolphins to two straight playoff appearances, something the team hasn't done since the 2000 and 2001 seasons. And we all know Flores is no stranger to controversy. A month after he was fired from the Dolphins, he sued the NFL and three teams, including the Dolphins, accusing the league of being, quote, rife with racism, particularly when it came to hiring and retention of black head coaches, coordinators, and general managers. He also accused uh, the Dolphins of wanting him to tank. There's a lot of stuff in there. I'm not going to get into the weeds of all that because it's a pretty complex situation that deserves its own video. Uh, it's still an ongoing situation as well, with the case still being active. Flores, though, was hired by the Vikings to be their defensive coordinator in 2023. And to his credit, he did turn around one of the worst defenses in the league. In 2022, the Vikings finished the season 30th in points allowed. And last year under Flores, they finished 13th. So quite uh, the impressive turnaround for the Vikings. And it's worth noting, Flores is scheduled to speak with the media tomorrow afternoon and will undoubtedly receive a few questions about Tua's comments. So this situation may be far from over. So while we wait to hear from the man himself, I'd love to hear from you guys. What do you make of this whole ordeal? Do you think Tua was right for making those comments about Flores? Or is he possibly blowing this whole thing out of proportion? Let me know either way in the comments. Now, for what it's worth, we did hear from the Vikings head coach, Kevin O'Connell. O'Connell said, I don't particularly have a comment on something that took place with another team. And he doesn't like to comment on comments of other players on other teams, but he just knows the players that Flores works with. He's got great relationships here. He really has. Now, while we're on the subject of coaches beefing with their former players and lawsuits against the NFL, Buccaneers head coach Todd Bowles made the news today after being asked about Randy Gregory. To fill you in a bit, back in April, the Bucs signed Gregory to a one-year $3 million deal. But in June, 
Randy Gregory filed a lawsuit against the NFL and the Broncos after being fined over $500,000 for taking a medication that contained THC while he briefly played for Denver early last season before he was traded to the Niners. The NFL no longer suspends players that test positive for THC, but they can be subject to fines, which is exactly what happened in this case. Basically, in Gregory's complaint against the league and the Broncos, he stated that he was diagnosed with a social anxiety disorder in 2021 and post-traumatic stress disorder in February of 2023. Well, apparently the Broncos and the NFL denied his request back in March to use dronabinol, a synthetic form of THC during non-work hours, and also denied a therapeutic use exemption as well. So like I said, that lawsuit was filed back in June and then Gregory proceeded to skip out on three mandatory minicamp practices as well as the entirety of the Bucks training camp resulting in him being fined a measly, uh, just kidding, it's a lot of freaking money, $1.4 million for those absences. Then on Sunday, it was reported the team had reached an agreement with Gregory to release the veteran pass rusher and fast forward to yesterday when Bucks head coach Todd Bowles was asked if he ever found out why Gregory didn't report to training camp. He said, quote, I never found out, but I wish him the best and we'll move on from there. Can't miss what you never had. So there you have it. The Randy Gregory era in Tampa Bay is over before it even started. Now, while I don't typically like to get political on this channel, uh, it's worth noting that Kamala Harris recently announced she will implement a $6,000 tax credit for newborns. And I just know that has to have Tyreek Hill over the moon excited considering how many children he's had as of late. I mean, this guy has all the talent in the world on the field, tons of speed, all that stuff. But off the field, he lacks discipline with an insanely fast release time. But hey, speaking of freak athletes doing freaky things, Giants rookie defensive tackle Elijah Chapman made a crazy play during the Giants and Texans preseason game when he chased down Texans running back J.J. Taylor, catching up to him 40 yards from the line of scrimmage. I can't even talk about this with a straight face because look at this. That man is moving faster than a freight train on Red Bull. I think Taylor actually stepped out of bounds and the play was ruled dead before he made the tackle. But still, that effort is the type of thing that can earn you a spot on the 53-man roster. And after this, J.J. Taylor might want to consider retirement. Now, before we get into a couple of rookie QBs that have been standing out during preseason, I want to get to some quick hitter news that includes an insane situation regarding a former NFL player on an airplane. But first, the Chargers had some good news today when their franchise QB Justin Herbert was spotted back on the practice field today in uniform with a helmet for the first time since being diagnosed with a plantar fascia injury on August 1st. That means he's practicing for the first time since July, and it's a good sign in his progression as he gets ready for the start of the season. I'm going to be curious to see how he responds to practicing and what the timeline might truly look like, but it was at least worth noting. And then, since I mentioned Brian Flores in the Vikings defense earlier in this video, it's worth mentioning that the team reached an agreement with veteran cornerback Stephon Gilmore yesterday, I believe, or Saturday on a one-year deal worth up to $10 million. As discussed in previous videos, the Vikings have had a nightmare of an offseason in which their rookie cornerback Kyrie Jackson tragically passed away in a car accident. Then on the first day of camp, their second-year corner and projected starter Makai Blackman tore his ACL. And on the second day of camp, the newly signed Shaq Griffin suffered a hamstring injury. So this move makes complete sense. Gilmore is getting up there in age. He'll be 34 next month but he's just a few seasons removed from winning Defensive Player of the Year in 2019 and is coming off a solid season for the Cowboys last year in which he started all 17 games and finished with two INTs and 13 passes defensed. Gilmore has also had history with Brian Flores. He was the Patriots defensive play caller in 2018 when Gilmore got his first All-Pro selection. So, Gilmore visited with the Vikings back on August 9th, probably due to that connection, and I'm sure Flores would have been pissed if they didn't end up signing him. Speaking of piss, former Lions offensive tackle Gosder Chairless, you like that transition, was recently arrested for allegedly urinating on another passenger during a flight from Boston to Dublin, Ireland. And yes, you heard that right. According to the police report, Chairless appeared drunk when he got to the Logan Airport in Boston and before the flight took off, he allegedly argued with another passenger over seating arrangements. Then. This is where it gets, I mean, completely off the rails. About an hour into the flight, he allegedly walked up to an elderly woman, exposed himself, and emptied his entire bladder for approximately 20 seconds. He also allegedly hit an elderly man while on his way back to his seat. And I have so many questions. The first one being, why? Just why? What are you doing, man? The second question I have is, 
Why did nobody try to stop him? I mean, it could be because he's about 6'6", 280. But still, you're telling me he peed on a woman for about 20 seconds and nobody attempted to stop him? I mean, yeah, sure, the passengers and flight crew were probably in complete shock and feared for their safety. Um, and I guess the crew did attempt to stop him. But man, I do not care if it's the Hulk himself. If he's peeing on my grandma, I'm rallying my fellow passengers and that man is getting thrown out of the emergency exit without a parachute. So it's safe to say things are not looking good for Cherilus at the moment. The Massachusetts State Police said they were called to Logan International around 2 a.m. because of a flight that was returning back to the airport due to an unruly passenger who urinated on another passenger on board. Troopers then verbally commanded him to leave the plane, but he became irate and uncooperative, so they escorted him to the jet bridge and placed him under arrest, and he actually appeared in court this morning, pled not guilty to interfering with the operation of an aircraft, disorderly conduct, and resisting arrest, and since the incident occurred while traveling over Canadian waters, there is also a federal investigation underway. For what it's worth, though, we did get a response from Chairless himself. He released a statement today, which you can see here, and he, to summarize this, he said that the flight was delayed for four hours and in preparation for the long flight, he took a sleep medication he normally doesn't take, which caused him to act the way he did. There might be a little bit of merit to that if you're drunk and then you take sleep meds. That's probably gonna mess with you pretty bad. He also apologized to the passengers in the flight crew, but to be clear, I am not making a excuse for this man. Heck nah, you can never act like that in public. Anyway, he was released on a $2,500 bail, and as of now, that's all I know, but frankly, that is way more than I wanted to or needed to know, yet it's my job to bring you guys the news, so bring you the news, I must. Next up, let's talk about two rookie QBs that have been shining throughout preseason with those being Jaden Daniels and Bo Nix. Caleb Williams has been solid as well, but we've known he was gonna be the starter since May. But I wanna focus on these other two because their status as potential starters was more up in the air, at least until this morning. Earlier today, the commanders named Jaden Daniels as their starting QB for week one, which was somewhat expected for the second overall pick, but now it becomes official. He's been working primarily with the starters during training camp as well as the two preseason games, and he's shown that he's more than ready to take over the offense. Over the course of two preseason games, Daniels has gone 12 of 15 for 123 yards and zero INTs, as well as 16 rushing yards on three carries. On top of that, he's looked decisive and has made good decisions. His average time to throw has been 2.1 seconds, with the league average being 2.8. He also hasn't taken a single sack, despite facing multiple blitzes throughout the two games. The commanders square off against the Bucks in week one, and all eyes are gonna be on last year's Heisman winner to see how he performs. Now, as for Bo Nix with the Denver Broncos, he put together another strong performance last night, going eight of nine for 80 yards and a touchdown, leading Denver to a couple of scoring drives. This was a great follow-up performance after he threw for 125 yards and a touchdown last week, but despite the great showings, Sean Payton is still not ready to officially name him the starter. After last night's game, Sean Payton said, quote, he's played well. I'm not announcing any starting quarterback tonight. I'll let you guys know when the time comes. I thought he played well. Well, Bo is in competition for that starting spot with Jarrett Stidham and Zach Wilson. And I think uh, at this point, everyone would be surprised if Nick's wasn't named the starter. Sean Payton has been borderline obsessed with this man going back to the pre-draft process. And he's reportedly looked the most ready out of the three QBs vying for the starting role. I mean, here's my thought on the situation. Why even waste time starting Jarrett Stidham or Zach Wilson if Bo Nix is the next franchise QB in Sean Payton's eyes. Just get the growing pains out of the way now rather than later. It's not like the situation with Patrick Mahomes and Alex Smith. Alex Smith was a very capable quarterback and had been doing a great job commanding the offense, then had a career year that year. But Jarrett Stidham, Zach Wilson, nah, they're not gonna get it done. Start Bo Nix. But hey, what do you guys think? Do you agree with me? Is it simply a matter of time before Sean Payton names Bo Nix a starter or is he gonna roll with one of the other two? Also, let me know what you guys think about the wild situation involving Gosder Pistolis and that crazy situation. And with that, the huddle's been broken. So until next time. Don't break, start.